Unleash the power of your data. That is how majestically HP promoted their major storage announcement on May the 4th, 2021. Calvin Zito even said, Look, I've been a part of HPE storage for 37 years. This really is the biggest thing that we've ever done. Whoa. There are actually not one, but two big banks. HP Electra, a brand new storage array family, and a unified cloud-based data management solution called Data Services Cloud Console. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm your enterprise tech enthusiast. If you're new here, this is where we talk everything about enterprise tech from bare metal to cloud native. If you are into that sort of stuff and would like to support the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks. Remember when almost one year ago I said this? HPE is transforming from a box mover into a real cloud company, and they are doing it faster than any of us anticipated. Well, things really are moving fast. This announcement is the latest testament to how serious HPE is about turning into a cloud company. The way I see it, the main issue with enterprise IT today is it is way too complicated. There are too many options to choose from, and they look the same, but really are not. And too often times they don't really even work together or they are difficult to manage, even within one vendor portfolio. Let me give you an example. These days companies have their precious data scattered around in the main data center, secondary data center, branch offices, edge locations, and in the public clouds. Management of all these resources is fragmented to say the least. You need at least one local management user interface for the on-prem storage arrays. If you also have some other storage arrays around, you'll need another management user interface. You might need a third one in remote locations, let's say hyper-converse environments at the edge, and a fourth one to manage the cloud data storage. Let's not even get started with the migration of the data. <laughs> Another challenge is the high upfront costs that are associated with the storage arrays. You'll pay for all the hardware and support, typically three to five years at the time of purchase. And these investments are usually big, very big. Now, keeping that in mind, I'm super happy to see that HP is now taking a very fresh and modern, some might even say bold approach to this. By introducing Data Services Cloud Console, HP wants to abstract data management wherever the data is located at. Using just one cloud-based user interface, you can manage data on-prem, at the edge, and in the cloud. From now on, you'll pay not only hardware and support, but additional subscription fee for this unified global data management. HP says the total cost of ownership will, however, remain pretty much the same. Only the pricing model changes to support the modern cloud experience. So, I guess that means hardware and or support will cost significantly less upfront, right? By the way, I find it pretty cool that the Data Services Cloud Console code itself is mainly based on Arupa Central, an established and solid platform for managing Arupa networks. Arupa Central has been available for years, managing millions of devices. So not only it's good to know HP is not rolling out a beta version 0.3 out to the public, <laughs> but it's also good to see that HP and Aruba are actually working quite tightly together something that's far from granted in the industry with these corporate structures. I bet Tom Black, who moved from Aruba to lead HP storage business unit, has a lot to do with all this. Before you get too excited though, there's a catch, like with everything. Not everything is available right away. First of all, a data services cloud console is built on microservices architecture, which means it is easy to add applications or apps to support different features and resources. At launch, the available features are limited, but we will surely see more in the near future. Also, at launch, this will only work with two storage arrays. Two new storage arrays. That's correct, HP did not leave the storage announcement at Data Services Cloud Console, but added two brand new arrays to the portfolio. HP Aletra 6000 and HP Aletra 9000. Let's dive in. So there's HP Aletra 6000, which is 100% designed and built from ground up in-house, but it is still based on HP Nimble Storage. 
HP Electro 6000 will be fully manageable from the cloud. It's going to be all NVMe. Being nimble-based offers six nines of availability and comes always as a two-node configuration. However, performance has been bumped up significantly. Marketing slides at least promise as much as three times more performance. Like the Little Bro 6000, Allegro 9000 is also completely designed in-house with all new internals, but it's heavily based on HP Primera DNA. Allegro 9000 is, of course, also managed from the Data Services Cloud Console and it is also all NVMe. But instead of six nines of availability, Allegro 9000 guarantees a whopping 100% availability, just like HP Primera. Allegro 9000 scales out to four nodes at launch, but later this year, there should be an update coming that allows Allegro 9000 to scale up to eight nodes. Performance compared to Primera in the marketing slides is just simply better. <laughs> I guess there's not much to improve then. So at launch, you can use Data Services Cloud Console only with Electro 6000 and Electro 9000. However, according to HP, they will add support for Nimble Storage and Primera soon. I would not be surprised if SimpliVity and Cloud Volumes would be supported right after. And why not HP and maybe MSA? Now that we are speculating, from technical point of view, nothing actually stops somebody, at some point, from developing an app that supports even third-party storage. Who knows? All this leads to ease of use. So maybe the most interesting thing to me is what HP is calling intent-based provisioning. One of the future apps that will be coming to Data Services Cloud Console. So once you have Electra Arrays providing the capacity, acting as the data engine, and Data Services Cloud Console abstracting all that, you can do some pretty neat things. For example, instead of logging into a storage array, figuring out the correct grade level, creating a LAN, doing zoning, presenting the LAN, etc., etc., you would just basically say, I need two terabytes of capacity for a global SQL server. And the Data Services Cloud Console, with the help of InfoSight AI, will find you the best location, Edge, on-prem, cloud, whatever, and provision the most suitable capacity for you. Now, how cool is that? That is what I call simplification. Now we have an Arupa Central or Network Central, and then we have the Data Services Cloud Console, which is managing storage and data. I'm just wondering if we are going to see a Compute Cloud Console Central anytime soon. But is this really something brand new that we haven't seen before? Well, no. And yes, there have been plenty of solutions that try to solve this very dilemma, like IBM SAN Volume Controller and NetApp Data Fabric. Heck, even HP had a solution called HP SAN Virtualization Services Platform, or HP SVSP, back in the good HP times, that tried to do the exact same thing. But there are a couple of fundamental differences. First of all, other solutions are all based on some sort of physical appliance that sits in between the actual arrays and compute, or has a special proprietary software that needs to be installed somewhere. Data Services Cloud Console, however, is 100% cloud native. No installations, just locking to DSCC. Am I supposed to shorten it like that, by the way? I don't know. You just log into DSCC, very much like you log into public cloud portal and off you go. Secondly, the underlying architecture is open and based on microservices that allow for virtually any capability to be brought in later on. In other words, it's not locked into any technology or proprietary hardware or protocol. This adds a lot of credibility for it to be a long-term solution. So to me, these two things make it really stand out from the other solutions that are or have been. As I mentioned in the beginning, already last year I declared HPE a cloud company. Granted, maybe just a tad prematurely, since HP is far from being a cloud company, in a sense AWS or Azure are cloud companies. But the ambitious and fast transformation from being a box mover to becoming a cloud provider with HP GreenLake and these latest announcements make me even more convinced that HP will be a true cloud company sooner than we may realize. Now that was a lot of interesting stuff. Can't wait to see how this unfolds for HP and the industry. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, give me the likes and the subs. See you with the next one.